What is up musician and producer people of YouTube? I am back with another video and in this one, I'm gonna be walking you through my budget home studio setup here in my bedroom and I'm gonna show you how I do things to offer some tips and suggestions on how you can get the most out of your DIY bedroom studio setup. Coming up. Welcome back, my name is Jack. Thanks for tuning into the video. If you're new, welcome. It's my goal to help creative music makers get better at making music at home. Like I said in the intro, this video is gonna be all about my bedroom studio. We're in it now. It's a multi-purpose space. I gotta live here, sleep here, and make great music here. So today we're gonna be talking about some tips and some tricks about organization, using the space for multiple purposes, routing, wiring, soundproofing, and anything you can do to get the most out of your space. Because if you're like me, you've gotta make do with what you have. Now before we get into the content of the video, I do wanna bring attention to something that I noticed recently. And at the time of making this video, only 2.1% of views are coming from subscribers. So hey, if you've been watching my videos in the past, or maybe this is the first one you've seen and you like it, please do do me a solid favor and make sure you hit subscribe with the bell notifications on so we can move some of that ratio. If you're part of that 97.5% that hasn't yet subscribed, you literally hold the power in your hands to help this channel grow, to help me reach more people. That honestly would mean so much if you could just switch teams, jump over on my side, get that 2.1% up and make a huge difference for me. So please do consider taking those two seconds and hitting subscribe today. But without further ado, let's jump in to these tips and walk you through my home studio setup. So the first thing that is really important in any studio is gonna be organization. And there's a few ways that I've chosen to tackle this. The first is by making good use of all the drawers in the dressers and desks and whatnot in my studio. So that means any of the clothes that might've been in my dresser have been moved and instead I'm using them for storage for microphones. As you see, I've got a mic drawer right here, as well as tools, gadgets, cables, odds and ends, power adapters, anything else you might need in the studio, but that's probably not gonna be clothing items or socks or underwear, so that's all moved somewhere else. Now, other than drawers, I do like having a lot of shelves in the studio because I feel like that helps maximize your vertical space without taking up a lot of floor space in the studio. So as you can see here, I've got a nice shelf with a lot of little mini keyboards and synthesizers, as well as some old four track tape recorders and just odds and ends. I've got some guitar stuff and some tools and things all on top of the shelf here. And I do have another shelf on top of my music production desk. The table is just a random table that I got years ago at a yard sale. The shelf is actually from Ikea, which you'll be hearing a lot about in this video. And the shelf feet are also from Ikea, but this really allows me to maximize the table space as well as give me the elevated space for my monitor speakers, my TV screen, and any other odds and ends I wanna throw on there. So all in all, it really helps maximize the space and is something that you should definitely consider. Now I did mention moving your clothes outside of your dresser drawers from your room. So of course you gotta find a new place for them. What I like to do is I have a shelf in my closet, which I found is really helpful. So what this does is it allows me to take all my clothes, store them up out of the way without needing a huge storage container inside on the ground, taking up space in my closet slash vocal booth. And another added benefit that I've mentioned in another video to having the clothes stacked up in the booth like this is that they actually do help with dampening reflections and they work as some sound absorbers themselves, which is a really great benefit and a good place to put your clothing for sure. There's one other thing I'd like to mention in the organizational category and that is bed risers. So I went out and bought a cheap pair of bed risers. I have them, you know, big box stores or on Amazon. And now these honestly made such a big difference between taking unusable space under my bed and turning it into very usable storage space. And you can see here, I've got multiple guitar cases, some Pelican cases, other cases in bags, and just anything that I don't have a great spot for, I slide it under there. It's nice for the guitar cases and my bass case because I can pull them out easy if I want to. And I can actually stack two on top of each other with the bed riser, whereas before I could only fit one. So if you're looking to maximize some space and you've got a bed taking up a lot of floor space, elevate it just a little bit. It'll make a big difference and will help out for sure. Hey, if you like what you see and you are enjoying this video, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what kind of video you'd like to see next. 
let's get back to it. Now, I mentioned this a little bit in the first tip, but the second tip is gonna be soundproofing and doing whatever you can to minimize reflections, quiet down your room, quiet down outside noise sources, and give yourself the best place to listen to music, mix music, record music, and all of that stuff. So I do recommend hanging up some foam. I've got acoustic foam inside the room, behind my monitor and my TV, and also all over my closet slash vocal booth. Now, I wish I had more in my closet, especially up on the ceiling, but it's not in the budget right now and hasn't really been a priority. Already. It's not too bad how I have it. Like I said, the clothes really do help and having the other stuff in the room for storage, but definitely consider some soundproofing. Amazon sells the foam. I think I got mine on eBay. It was like a pack of 96 for 150 or $160. It's not terribly expensive and it's pretty readily available. If you're not quite ready to dive in and get the foam, what I used to do is put thick moving blankets up on the walls or on the ceiling, whatever works. When I was in a basement with concrete walls, that really helped. So, you know, maybe just hang some of those up in your closet. That could help some too. But if you have a hard floor in the room, putting a carpet or a rug down would really help as well. And just anything to break up those hard parallel walls or surfaces will really make a big difference. Now, the third tip I've got is to think about routing and connectivity. So routing your audio cables, your power cables, power strips, all that kind of stuff. It really makes the difference between having a creative and productive space or having a space that's frustrating and kills motivation because you've got to work harder than you should. So as you see all over my room, I've got power strips. I've got a power strip here on my dresser, which I use for my video editing computer. I have that set up there, but I'll also use it to charge camera batteries, anything else that needs to be charged. And sometimes I'll set up a synthesizer over here with another keyboard if I want to jam out or have a second station to work. I've got power strips behind my guitar amp for my pedal board, for the amp, and for my rack, which we'll be talking about in a moment, as well as power strips under the desk to power my computers, monitor, controllers, and all that. Additionally, I have a power strip ran into my closet for the lights that are in there, or for the person recording if they need to plug anything in. Unfortunately, like most closets, there wasn't an outlet already wired in there, so I just ran it under the door with the snake, which is another great thing for connectivity. I've got the snake running through the booth, underneath the door, around the bed, and into my interface so that I don't have to run cables across the bedroom every time I'm tracking. You know, you don't have to have a fancy snake to do this, but even just running a permanent cable or two along the wall would really make a difference and make things easier for you. The fourth tip that I wanna recommend is a little more on the cosmetic side and isn't super necessary, but any of you who've worked in a studio know that the vibe and the feel of the room and the space is almost as important as the equipment in it. So for this one, I really do recommend putting some thought into some cool and creative lighting options or anything you can do to just give the studio a nice vibe, a nice mood to keep the creative juices flowing and get you in a good mental space. So like I've shown before in my booth, I have a cheap set of $5 LED strips hung up on what would have been the old clothing rack that I'm not using anymore. It really does make a difference. As you can see in my videos, it backlights the video nicely. That's really cool, as well as just if you're in the booth and you're recording, you can turn off the big boring light up top and leave those running and change the color, whatnot. It's really awesome. But I also have another strip of lights underneath my desk, which, you know what, if I'm producing at night and I have all the lights off, turning those on really does set the mood and, and makes it nice for sure. So definitely don't overlook studio lighting. All right, now the fifth tip I've got for you is definitely DIY focused, and that is to keep a lookout for Ikea or other kind of wood furniture that you can repurpose for music studio equipment. So now, like I mentioned before, the shelf on my desk is from Ikea, but actually the little audio rack to the left of my desk is made out of the Ikea Rast nightstand. And there's tons of YouTube videos that'll show you how you can buy that nightstand. I think it's like $15 and turn it into a fully functioning rack mount rack for your standard rack mount equipment. That's what I did. I love the thing. It's super awesome. I think all in all, it costs maybe $50. I don't remember off the top of my head, but like I said, I'll link a video so you can check that out if you want and maybe make one of your own, but I definitely recommend it. And you'll see in two other spaces in the studio, one on top of the rack and one on my main shelf is two little elevated shelves. I've got my Access Virus TI sitting on one on top of my rack. And then on the other shelf that I showed earlier, I've got my double decker Tascam Porta Studio tape machines on one of those as well. And that's actually a little wooden crate. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll link it in the description. And basically you just use a couple pieces from it, use some other pieces of wood, and you've got a nice little elevated shelf or stand that you can use on your desk, use to store things underneath and really maximize that storage space. 
As always, if you have any comments or suggestions about this video or my channel as a whole, please do drop them below. I try to reply to every single comment that I get and your feedback and suggestions really do help a ton. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and do subscribe with the bell notifications to stay up to date on future uploads. Again, if you're part of that 97.5% who have not subscribed but are coming and viewing my videos, thank you so much. But please do switch sides, join over, and hit subscribe because that would mean a ton. Like always, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next upload. Peace.